My name is Marcin Kirdelevic. Uh, I'm the founder of uh, BME. Uh, this is a this is a software that we're working on for uh, five years now, and we actually started to like give it a little bit more attention now and, and give a bit more visibility. So today, what I want to talk about is actually you know the challenges that you meet you know during actually a building a software process, and also you know how to how to accelerate that and also how to like improve the quality and all of that and uh, you know all the trends that you see on the market and how to adopt them can you hear me okay yeah how many of you are pure coders okay and then managers okay thanks uh, so I'll switch to slides I have a couple of slides and then I have a uh, some demo as well works perfectly so who has visited a BME website so far all right a few of them great thank you <laughs> so few words about BME what we do you know how it works etc so BME is an easy to use okay and it is easy to use secure scalable enterprise ready framework for, for you to automate your work build business process driven software platforms and robots okay so there was a question about like robotic uh, automation and yes we do that as well and uh, we're actually going to show you we're a startup we're a super small startup uh, but we have some you know local presence in, in various parts of the world already so we all were working in different places you know working on that piece of software for five years now and we just decided to give it a bit more visibility so you know we can start building a bigger community and you know get you guys involved in that so we have uh, headquarters in london actually not far from here and you know if you would like to have you know a local representation you know if it's you know east coast west coast brazil you know frankfurt uh, stockholm uh, bangalore and tokyo you can actually meet you know and a, 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 a team members from the BME. so again we are a startup but you know we ha we were able to secure you know a couple of good uh, good partnerships already we focus more on the enterprise market right where we kind of build you know business process driven platforms as a service or you know we do robotic process automation and so on and so on and we big you know we build you know api platforms etc and you know there's there's a couple of uh, you know partners that we have here you know i guess uh, everybody knows red hat you know we, we kind of uh, team up with them to build automation uh, solutions then that we bring to market together with you know a couple of large system integrators around the world you know we, we use shi uh, globally for procurement you know Signix Datamatics is a, uh, is a 1000 people uh, organization that has a global reach and delivers uh, services on top of BME uh, you know Evolve is actually Alibaba and you know and uh, and uh, you know a local company joint venture based in uh, Dubai you know Zoriant again you know over a thousand uh, people company uh, headquartered in in uh, um, uh, in India, but you know, having having uh, 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 teams here in the UK as well. Similar, iNexture, you know, Vapor VM again. Uh, middle is Linovate from you know, pretty pretty innovative company from um, from um, uh, Tel Aviv, and yes, MIS is also you know a, a great partner uh, doing you know outsourcing um, services uh, you know around the world. We as a BMI because we are a small team you know just uh, just uh, uh, less than, than 20 people you know we really focus on building that core piece of software and then we you know we we make sure that there is a demand on the market for it like all the services on top of BME etc etc are being delivered or by you know these partners or our customers build you know a small teams of experts that you know help to train and then you know they're able to to build you know business process driven platform platforms software is eating the world I guess this is part of like every software development presentation now like when I when I watch all the presentation like everybody's got it I need to have it right now what's really fortunate is that we are you know in the software 
industry, right? And if we are in the software industry, that means a great future ahead of us, right? So, of course, there are you know, some challenges you know, that, that happen you know, during developing you know, projects. And you know, I look at it from both perspectives. One, a technology, and one actually business, right? So, you know, it's the IT was always meant to deliver a business values, you know, for managers and actually, you know, and, and do that and not just, you know, do IT for the sake of IT or, you know, or distract the business. Now, we have perfect and very, very good, you know, software development teams all, er, uh, all over the world. You know, every organization becomes really a software company now, but they have, you know, all, all they have, you know, the one common problem. Whenever you actually start growing your team, size of the team and over the time, what you actually see is that the quality of development actually doesn't stay constant. And it's also because, you know, not, not, not developers fault. I would actually say that it's more on the management side, right? Where, you know, where just people don't know like how to, you know, keep the, 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 the good quality, you know, best practices and all of that, etc. right? Now, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately for developers, you know, the, the um, salaries goes up, but, you know, but unfortunately for, for managers, you know, the, 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 the cost goes up over the time as well. And sometimes it go and ca can, can go pretty fast. Now, if you're in this situation, I can tell you it's actually not that bad. It's not that bad because some companies are in a much worse situation. So, you know, what happens is, you know, reality in a software development project is that you don't have just a nice, you know, curve where, you know, where, you know, your quality like decreases a little bit and then, you know, cost increases a little bit where you could actually manage that by, you know, increased business, increasing business margins and so on. Actually, a lot of companies are in much worse situation because you know when you're growing the team when you're actually you know uh, when you're starting as a manager you're starting focus on something else and not on your developers what they're gonna do is they're gonna move and if they're gonna move somewhere else and you have you know a team of you know 50 developers developing the team and half of them is moving away to, to, a, to a different company and then you're hiring you know at 25 new people you know, this is a task for managers to keep, you know, the, the quality of the code and cost in control. I can tell you nobody can do it. Again, that's great for developers. They should pay you more. They should take care of you. Because if not, they will end up in really, really bad situation. Now, let me tell you, you know, the observations that I see on the, you know, enterprise market, you know, how, how, how they develop, you know, software projects at the moment. So everyone remembers old times where everything was done manually, right? You come in, you install your, you know, dev tools, you start coding. Then, of course, you know, you go to a compiler. Then, you know, then you put it on another server, you know, testing, da 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 da. Right? It was great, great time. You know, salaries were not great at that time, and you know, a lot of companies didn't understand the value of IT. But you know, it's getting better now. With that. You know, coding, well, what we were hearing from managers was like, we're too slow. You know, you're coding this, you know, you're, 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 you're creating that software, but we're constantly too slow. So, rightly, what developers did, okay, we're going to introduce a couple of frameworks, right? We're going to introduce a couple of frameworks so we can actually code faster. And this is when, you know, you move from, you know, C++ and things like that to, you know, to, to better technologies. Now, great move. But make your, ha make your manager happy. You know, somebody told them, we need mobile first, right? We need, you know, some new shiny, you know, words that are coming, you know, from Gartner and other analysts almost every day. And we need to do that. And we need to do that. And we need to add, you know, more and more functionalities in, and our software needs to behave better and better and better and better. So rightly, what developers do? Introduce even more frameworks. You just, you just do what, what managers want and, you know, to, to, to keep them happy, this is the right thing to do. Now, unfortunately, you know, if you start asking them, is 
you know, after you introduce, you know, a, a, a couple of new frameworks, we're going to say, hey, well, now we're even slower than at the very beginning. And this is, this is normal because, you know, instead of, uh, you know, maintaining, you know, a couple of frameworks to three major frameworks, you know, now you're, you're, you're having, you know, 25 of them, right? Because they wanted to have a mobile first because they wanted to have, you know, I don't know, the offline version. They wanted to have mobile apps. They wanted to have, you know, something, something, something. And that's the reality. So, rightly, what you do, you introduce a idea of DevOps automation. And I don't want to talk a lot about like DevOps, like traditional DevOps, because I, I guess you know what it is, right? So you know, just you know, automating the, 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 the process of, uh, of uh, you know, creating the software, getting operations you know, all together, right? I guess, I guess you know, there's a lot of people talking about it like every day, so I'm not going to focus too much on that. So you, you rightly introduce the DevOps and you have everything automated and actually, you know, you try to speed things up and manage those 20 frameworks exactly in the same way as you were doing with three. Now, what happens after that is, you know, you create a great software, you know, cloud native application, da, da, da. Well, manager says at the end is still, you know what? The software is not exactly what I wanted. Uh, you know, you, we forgot about those little things or, you know, in uh, some certain situations, software behaves, you know, in a different way, da, 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 da. Again, is it a developer fault? Very often it's not, right? And what you do then, right? You introduce, like, all the possible, you know, new technologies, you know, frameworks that are available in the market, right? And then, you know, what is the answer? The answer is get them involved in the process. And not just get them involved in the process as everybody defines an agile software development, because we know how agile software development uh, works in the enterprise, right? We know the reality, we know the, the, the definition, but we know actually you know, how, how much business people really want to be involved in, in, in producing the software, right? Or how much they don't want to be. So what you do with DevOps 2.0, you actually you know, create a continuous delivery of the software, but including a business part of the organization, right? Because you're writing a software, you know, that will be used by, you know, many different, uh, different um, uh, uh, parts of organization. You actually say, okay, if you're writing a system for marketing, you know, yes, you need to have marketing, sales, you need to have product, you need to have, you know, uh, uh, people, you need to have, you know, business part of organization. Actually, you know, what you do, you, you, you ask them to, you know, actively contribute to what you're doing. Now, it's a great idea, but how do you actually do it? If you take a look at available, you know, tools, etc., they're very technical, you know, they're very, you know, they're very advanced and, 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 and you know, and very, very good for you as developers, technical, to, to use them, right? If you ask a person from, uh, I don't know, uh, even a product manager, you know, how to actually like improve, you know, the software and, you know, and give uh, the value, you know, of a software. And, you know, if you don't ask them to go through the whole uh, life cycle of, you know, getting a business requirements, da, 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 you know, traditional waterfall, actually, they will not know. Because they will give you, you know, a kind of a generic idea. I think the software should work like this. If I click here, it should do this, 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 and that, right? And that's the reality. That's that's how you. That's what they can do. So what we've done is, you know, with our experience in the enterprise software for quite some time, we've actually built a Biami. Biami is a DevOps 2.0 framework, and that's the, probably the longest sentence, you know, we have, that bridges the gap between the traditional DevOps and the business people. It actually brings them all together, right? It empowers business people to actually influence the way software works, right? And it also, also brings a business context on top of that. So, you know, various, uh, various um, uh, different contexts will execute, you know, in a different uh, result within the software. That sounds a bit like impossible, but let me tell you actually how it works. I'll tell you a little bit how we've built that software and what's inside so you can understand the technology behind it and then you will understand better how it works as well. So first we have you know, something that we call BIAMI Core. BIAMI Core is a tiny, tiny piece of software 
that you can run on any platform. It's uh, written in Java, but you can run it you know, on a small Raspberry Pi, you know, server, desktop, whatever, up to the cloud. Right? This is a tiny, tiny software that, you know, that basically what's responsible is responsible for you know, uh, um, uh, running all the you know, BME framework commands that we have in that. And those commands are basically you know, to, to uh, um, build and run, execute you know, fully automated business processes within the software. Now within the core, there's some embedded database and there are like five major, major elements in it. There is a script element. Script element is like a list of all the available plugins, or you can call them modules, that are available in your repository. What they do is every, every script is responsible for doing a specific work. So still when you use BAMI, it doesn't mean you're not coding, because you're gonna code a lot of those script plugins and, and all of that. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring a, a common best practice on actually how to deliver you know, a software that again can be influenced by business people as well. So we have a, you know, a, a script as a repository. The tasks are in a repository of your automated tasks as well as processes that you're storing in your system. There is a request that manages all the requests for the automation and logs for logs. Now on top of that we have context. So we have, uh, we have an idea of parameters where whenever you build a business process you can say you don't want to hard code all the bits and pieces in it. You're, you're able to specify some parameters and then when you actually you know, query the, 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 the system then you're able to pass those parameters alongside with the query. Now next to the core you know, from scripts, when after you build a process, you know, there is a set of plugins and always there will be you know, different plugins that, you know, we will give you and, you know, we, we give you uh, out of the box like almost 100 plugins and, you know, if you want, uh, we actually promise to deliver new plugins within two working days if we don't have, you know, such a specific plugins or other way, like you can build those plugins in any programming language as well and, you know, we can actually tell you how to do it. Now, this part of software what it does, it helps you actually automate the full business process, and I'll show you how to do it later. But this is what we call BME Dev. BME Dev, so it's, a, it's being used for development and test purposes. You can actually go to bme.io slash download and download it for free. Okay? Doesn't cost anything. That, that helps you with designing and testing your automation processes for you to build you know, business process driven like platforms, software, or, or robots. Now, that's for testing. What we offer, we offer a little bit more because what you want to do really, and that's the value of our, our software, is you wrap that, that uh, automated uh, um, uh, processes into microservice architecture and you expose it as a service. Okay, so the way you do it is you, on top of that, well, below you run everything on application or application um, uh, servers, but on top of that, you build a web service layer so actually what you can do is you can then, you know, build load balancers on, on top of that and then you can build really, you know, cloud native scale, scale out applications that can handle, you know, hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of requests per second, right? And we actually proved that and we have uh, customers who are running such, such, such a, you know, such a, such a uh, application. So, and this is what we call BAMI Enterprise Edition. Uh, so that's, you know, those two additional elements. There's more, but those are kind of um, major. So this is an example of like how you build, you know, a cloud native platform, business process driven, like, uh, you know, you just put a lot of instances, you manage them exactly in the same way as you manage uh, um, uh, microservices, you know, in, 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 in DevOps, in a standard DevOps process. So, you know, if you're using, uh, I don't know, Docker Swarm or you use, you know, Kubernetes or you have your own, you know, management system, you just use that, right? You can use that or you can write your own processes even within BAMI to kind of manage, uh, you know, BAMI clusters as well. Uh, 18 minutes already, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speed up a little bit. Let me tell you how it works. So you design the processes in a tool that your business people will know how to use. And that's the spreadsheets, right? 
Uh, we have actually prepared a kind of a template on you know, how they should be filling those. So you know, it's easy then later on to translate from their requirements into you know, business deliverables. Right? So you have like certain columns, you know, stages. You put your first one is the stages, then you have a business tasks. Those are translated into technical tasks that you know that you'll do, and technical tasks run various scripts. And scripts run, you know, modules, plugins, and all of that. Right? Now at the bottom you also specify the the the, the parameters, you know, dynamic parameters that you want to work in the systems. Again, what Biami will do then later on, it will suck this Excel and actually create you know, a little microservice from that. So you, with that, you kind of create you know, one process, two, three, how many processes you have to build your platform or, or the software. You suck it into you know, execution, BME core, so this is, this is within the dev or, or enterprise edition. By specifying those those um, uh, parameters, you can like request you know some specific context and they get the results. But with the same processes, if you you know give a different context, you can have a different different uh, results. Now, because it's a technical audience, I wanna I added specific especially for you like the slides about from the technology how it works. So you know when you de design the the process. You do their web service calls with the specific context parameters, right? So you do them, and those are the parameters that you specify when you design the process. Now, what it does is it basically, you know, Biami Core sucks it in and creates, you know, a specific IDs for for those requests, and then you know you need to kind of execute the automation. And what it does, it just executes, you know, the automation in the way like you asked it to, to do, and you know it just executes. You know the specific parameters, you know from from the requests that you that you put. Now, there is a little bit uh, there is a slide about a bit advanced you know usage of Biami, but I'll go very quickly just to tell you that you know there are three modes that you can use you know for 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 business process automation, like single mode just to just to actually do a single request batch, which you understand what it is the loop and and then single. And then you know stream with web services call. Now there are some advanced features within the software. Uh, whenever you build al automation processes and you would need you know a product lifecycle management, or we call it resource manager, right? What it is is, for instance, you're building a platform to I know, automate something as a service, database as a service, okay? Which means that every time you know your customer requests, I want a new database. There's a specific you know, set of steps that you will have automated. But in this process, there will be some parameters that you need to manage from a pr product lifecycle management. For example, you know IP addresses, right? So what you want to do, you have you know you have a pool of available IP addresses, but you want to make sure that each time you request you know a new database, it will be actually built you know on the new VM, or you know a new VM will be spin off with a new uh, uh, IP address assigned to it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So for things like that, we have something that we call the resource manager that actually can manage the life cycle of the resources of the of the parameters that we will use in the process. Now everything in the in the system is logged in, so all the logs that you're using. You can send and later on to your application uh, um, uh, application performance uh, uh, performance management application, and then you can basically you know measure KPIs and actually SLAs on delivering for the automation of processes. Uh, if you're happy, I actually want to I want to do very quickly. I want to very quickly uh, you know build a chatbot in a five minutes and 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 do we have time? T Ten more minutes. So we're just going to do, you know, <laughs> chat box in five minutes, right? So what I have here, uh, and it's a live demo. So if it works, it works. <laughs> what I have here, I have a, a, a vanilla installation of, uh, of uh, a, a Biami dev, so something which you can actually download for free, right? So I'm just initializing it. No, it's good. it's good. I think I will. I'll try to manage that way. So what it does is, 
But yeah, I mean, when you download it, it's a tiny, tiny piece of software. Not, not what it does when you initialize, it's also like just download some, um, some first processes for you to, so you can learn, you know, how to, how it works, etc. Later on, you can remove everything. But basically what it does is, you know, the task list is a process list where, you know, it just, just sh shows you, you know, shows you, uh, you know, some, 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 some processes. Now, I have prepared a process Simple process that I hope you're gonna you're gonna be able to see here. Um, uh, okay. So the idea came from, you know, we were working from you know on the on this on this for for, for a while, and I have 11 years old son who basically said, okay, so what BM can do? Oh, BM can do automate everything. So can it do my homework? Well. Probably not yet, but actually, if you teach it how to do your homework, maybe it will do, right? So, you know, for, 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 for the people, you know, in the next generation, they will be able to do that. So they said, okay, so can I, you know, can I talk to Biami? So actually, you know, you cannot, but you know what? Let's sit down and let's create a little chatbot. So actually, you can talk to Biami. And this is something what, you know, 11 years old guy, like learning on, on the ICT, you know, lessons, but actually, you know, done in a little bit different way. So, you know, we just created very quickly, something what I call chat box, right? Where you receive a question, you check the answer for that question, and then you display the answer, okay? That's like the simplest process. Like when we, when we run and we build a project, you know, for customers, you know, they, they basically have, you know, 100 steps or, or et cetera. We try, we try to actually make it as, as, as small, as tiny as possible because, you know, the concept of microservices should be that, you know, if you can actually split the process into, you know, small parts, you should do it and then just spin them off, you know, whenever you need so you optimize your IT resources. But this is a kind of a simple, simple process. So you basically, you know, you basically uh, receive the question, you know, check the answer, display. So what we can do is, I'm going to suck it into, into Biami. So it shows you like, you know, a lot of comments here and uh, one of them is import. So I'm just going to import it. And uh, I'm going to import it without the need to download it. So actually, Okay, so I just ran one command to kind of import you know, the process from Google Spreadsheet and actually didn't process. And you can see that on the task list, like there is a, there's a process that has ID number seven called chatbox, right? So what it does is it's, you know, it's a simple process. What it does is checks uh, in the temp folder. So this is, these are the files for the BIAMI. And I'm not going to spell. You know, it just checks a simple text file that has two columns: question and answer. <laughs> That's just like the simplest, simplest, uh, the, the most simple, you know, way of like building the chat box. And that's this just, just, just show you know very quickly. So, so what we can do actually is, you know, we can now query. Uh, oops, um, we can query. I will just uh, copy and paste. So, so I'm gonna uh, query. I will request and process so complete automate, uh, and I will request chat box. Bo chat box and uh, it's not called chat box, is it? Chatbot. <laughs> Chatbot and I will question like your name. And uh, something uh, uh, didn't work quite how it should. So I'm just going to see debug. Okay, and it's because, yeah, of course, because I, when I, okay, it's only because when I, I just forgot to ask that, you know, I requested a task called chatbot. 
Okay, and if I do that, uh, a the name should say some. Uh, okay, one thing I didn't do because it's a fresh install, I need to update. So what update does is after I after I import the pl the the, the uh, process, it will have some new you know plugs in, and scripts in it, and you just need to you know actually make sure that they are in the system. So now when we have them, okay, you can ask them like, "What's your name?" And the answer is Sam. Okay, and then you can like create those you know simple simple uh, chat boxes now. Later on, this is this is in a free version of Biami in the in the enterprise. You remember you expose it as a web service. So actually, we can write a nice UI on top, and then you can start asking questions and build your bots within minutes. Now that's very simple, to very very quickly to show you the demo. I will share the slides, and you will have like all these steps, so you can do it. Couple of advantages, and uh, I'll I'll go quickly. A couple of advantages. Uh, to go through uh, for you. So it's really easy to use. When we actually started to work with you know, a couple of banks, right, to tell them like, oh, we're going to introduce you know, DevOps to our idea, and you know, we're going to automate some processes, and we're going to do you know, some data integration, etc. The first thing they said, OK, we have a lot of documentation. We actually have, you know, we, have, we are ready for that. We have prepared ourselves for that. And then we asked them, OK, so now tell us, like, how do you actually start this, this documentation, etc. And they said, we store it all in Excel files. Perfect. What we did is we actually were, you know, we we're building those processes by Control C, Control V, you know, into BME, then just you know adding adding the IT part on that and and you know building fully automated processes. But it's easy to use. Uh, business people really really like it. Now it's easy to integrate and embed with your existing software. Very often we have a project where we actually ex uh, uh, extend functionality of existing software with BME. Like imagine if you're running an SAP project, you know. Part of the implementation, you can de deliver with SAP software itself, and then later on, you always need to write, you know, a ABAP code or whatever they have. Now, if you do an upgrade of the system, you know how painful it is to kind of go through the the uh, custom development that you've done in the past that will not work with a new version. So we, we're building kind of, you know, an, an abstraction layer between SAP and those additional features, and we can we can um, we can. Um, uh, we can extend the functionality of the software, like collaboration and change management with dynamic parameters, collaboration and change, change management. We use GitHub for collaboration. So we put, you know, those, uh, we, we use the GitHub that you use for developing the software. We use the GitHub actually to collaborate, you know, on the designing the processes. It, it actually works pretty well. The change management is something what you're going to love because, you know, the, the BME works in a way whenever you introduce a new version of the process, it sucks it in. And actually, you don't need to do anything, like even change your one line of the code in any place to actually, you know, start getting requests with new version of that of that process. So that that works. You can extend functionality with your own plugins. Obviously, you build, you know, fully scalable, you know, cloud native architecture. On that, it doesn't have a UI. You always write your own UI and and you know and and communicate via web services. It is a platform independent. Runs on pretty much anything, and it's you know free to start, free of charge, to start, you know, design and test your processes. The things that you're going to like as a developers, and I prepared it here, is we actually, when you move between different, different, uh, different environments, you know, sometimes it's difficult for people to like move one piece of software from you know one VM or set of VMs, you know, into another environment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you know, you have some, you can have some third-party uh, software that will do part of that work, you know, for custom code, etc. But you always have more than custom code that you need to move. And actually, you know, we've even created a simple process that you know, that moves you between environments. We call it that, like Dev to EE. But actually, you know, it's it it can run, it can. Uh, it can move, you know, from one environment to, to, to another, you know, in any. The, the change management is really something what you're going to like because, you know, it really works like if, if, if a business people will tell you, managers will tell you, you know what, we need to add this little, little thing 
you're actually going to add it and you know suck the process in the system and you know it will go through a set of you know a standard you know approval process that you you know had it before you know approved etc and it will be you know automatically will appear in the system and you know and they will see it like you know same way as i don't know google is constantly you know improving products and you know bringing new features every day etc etc plugin list update the same actually you don't need to install a new version of the software when you're adding new plugins Right, this is this is this is great. Like you just install one version of the software and then even if you add more plugins, you just do update and the update will manage all the all the all the updates. The uh, plugins you can write in any programming language. Again, great. So so you can use your existing uh, skills. Of course, you can build your own plugins and web service uh, uh, repositories. Now, for developers, this is also a opportunity for you to actually monetize on BIAMI, right? So we have actually a couple of our partners actually have built, you know, fully automated uh, processes. They expose them as a service, as a, as, as a platform, as a service. But actually, you know, they uh, require some authentication and they build, you know, billing system on top. So whenever you want to, uh, like, use, you know, like, super advanced, you know, a, 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 a system to do, like, the, the quality, you know, in a core banking systems that one of our partners has, you know, it's not a free software. It's then something, you know, you need to actually, you know, buy from them. But you get, you know, the full set of, you know, automated processes with it. Last but not least, what I really love is open source business processes. So what you're able to do is you're able to build fully automated process without sharing you know any knowledge that you don't want to share because remember you know within the process you can put parameters and so on and you actually don't need to you know share any kind of passwords in your security uh, you know things etc you actually expose it on the github you build community around it you ask people to to contribute and think of you know building a new software and then you know a, a kind of you know people from the whole world like telling you you know what i think if you would add this then you know it would do a better job and and so on and so on and that's 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 uh, you know a pretty new idea that we introduce so i was talking for almost four or five minutes but you know to make sure that you actually get something from it is we're launching a developer challenge where uh, you know small startup with super agile uh, you know ideas whenever we get the opportunity to actually to talk to you we said hey we need to give you something so you actually get something for like listening to this talk and not just you know waste your time and you know it's a great software and you know you'll, you'll, you'll use it but actually you know if you want to have a i don't know a new home pod or however you know apple calls you know the new speaker or you know you know upgrade your laptop we we are actually launching a developer challenge what it is is we'll ask you to create a concept for intelligent chatbot so you've seen the chatbot then it wasn't very intelligent it was just simple one but actually if you would like to take part in a, in, in, a, in a competition you know we'll ask you to create a concept you know like uh, the processes that you would do to build intelligent chatbot okay now you decide what intelligent chatbot does so you know we don't limit you with what it should do like it can it can sell something you know from amazon or it can be you know, I know a customer service or it can do just integration of some technologies you know for, for for customers and so on you decide what it does but but bot needs to be successful in whatever it does so whenever it's it sells like we're going to test it and actually see you know if it's if it's if it's going to be successful in selling well, bot needs to be able to keep conversation, right? So, you know, we did just simple conversation, but actually, you know, it should be able to respond to more than one you know, questions and so on. Now, of course, needs to remember uh, uh, history because, you know, if you came and you said your name, then, you know, you don't want to put your, your, your name again. And it needs to be able to understand uh, different types of information, of course. So that's again, it, when you talk about localization, you know, places, etc. You know, versus you talk about products, you know, it's a different kind of category of information. And you know, the chatbot should be able to to, to understand that. And what we're asking for is uh, write down maximum four A4 pages. You know, send it to Biami. Uh, and uh, you know, if you send it before uh, end of uh, October then before christmas time we're actually going to announce the price and then we're going to you know probably also build these solutions together with you 
that's all I want to talk about Biami. Just very quickly, there's a couple of resources available for you to learn more. You can download free uh, software. You can start designing. You know, we have some videos for you to kind of, you know, see how we actually, you know, go, go through a, a design and test. We have, we run webinars and if you're interested in partnering or running some demos, get in touch with us. And that's all I wanted to tell you about, you know, the DevOps 2.0. How you build, you know, fully automated processes exposed as a, you know, microservice architecture, build your own, you know, business process driven platform as a service. Do you have any questions? Just to get it right, you mentioned that there is like web interface, isn't it? But you know, I'm not an athlete. There is, uh, so I mentioned that there is no web inf interface. No web what, what we do with web service interface. Okay. Okay. For the way we design, at the moment is what you do is you usually design the process using spreadsheets that was what is what you do or some customers build their own design interface and they integrate into their existing systems would it be easier just to build a fraud uh, like web interface super easy <laughs> so <laughs> why haven't done it yet because you know i can't see like using spreadsheets yeah. to literally you know describe your processes yeah. Because you know it's spreadsheet, you can lose it. It's like a piece of paper. I'll tell you why. Another thing, you need to build in versioning because you don't know yeah. you know what's gonna happen after someone changes and you need to revert it back and so on. So I'll tell you why. So I'll start with a second question. Versioning versioning is in there. So even if you go to there is a versioning, even if you go to uh, like like my demo and you just import the process again, like you will have you know, it will automatically add a next version of that process, but you will be able to access both versions, etc., etc. When you say getting access to, I mean, does it have an interface? Because, you know, going through command line is a bit painful. No, no, so command line you use for a design and test process. Okay. After you automate, you actually don't use UI. Very often what you use is, you know, we build a web service layer on top, okay? Now, what you, when in reality, what you do to trigger that, you build a custom forms to trigger automation of that process. Okay, so for instance, if you if you're if you're a bank and you're building you know automated uh, you know a credit scoring application, so you know you have a form you know you fill all the data, okay, and that form triggers the web service call and it goes through an automated process, gives you results in a SOAP format, and then you, you display them back in your in your uh, in your system. We didn't want to build a, a user interface. Uh, because we want to give you freedom on what sort of technology you want to have, we want to use. We have some examples of, for example, uh, you know, using some like web forms, you know, technologies that you can, you know, like take and, and embrace. But the reality is, like, if you if you want to start from scratch with Angular JS or whatever, it's super simple to do. Now this is for running the production. Now remember, because I think what you think of is, you know, a uh, a, 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 um, um, a terminal and command line. You do it only during a build and test. You don't use that in production. Okay? For the, in the production, remember, it needs to be a fully automated process that will just go. And, you know, there's no interaction. We, we, we have built something what we call human tasks. But, you know, this is when you need to kind of, you know, let people know that you know pro uh, process got into some certain stage and needs like uh, uh, manual approval or or something like that. But the reality is most of the projects we actually say like no 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 don't use don't use um, uh, human tasks you know automate full process and then you know just split one big process into two if you need to have you know manual approvals and always integrate it with the tools that you're already using. Right. So if if if, if for example you know like like. Uh, one of the other projects we just ran was, you know, uh, extending a Salesforce for some kind of advanced uh, reporting purposes, right? And, you know, a customer is using Salesforce and they keep all the information in the Salesforce. So we say, look, you're going to have all the information in the Salesforce, right? You will just, what we're going to do is, you know, things that you do like monthly, weekly, and daily, we're just going to automate for you and you will not even see, you know, any, any interface to it. From, but you get, we're going to suck, you know, all the information from Salesforce, do whatever we need to do send information back to Salesforce and, you know, some, some additional information to customers and, and, you know, and employees. And it will be a fully automated process. So basically this technology is just like building some muscles on the infrastructure or process. Building what, sorry? Muscles. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a, 
depends on what areas you're using. Like you know, some people are using for 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 auto IT automation, for like infrastructure automation, right? Like setting up you know new database as a service or you know new hosting or whatever, right? Now so this is this this goes under you know IT automation. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, umbrella. You know, we have we have uh, you know something what people call RPI, so robotic process automation. You know, that's that, that that's fully kind of automated processes for uh, for uh, not not only IT, but actually for production lines, etc. Yeah, I think next time we build a video about you know actual how it works. It would be easier for you to spread the word, you know, just to show more examples. Because as for now, I thought, okay, it's just like literally command line, and there is like obviously magic, but yeah. you know, it's kind of hard to discover that. I can't agree with you more, and we're working on this, and you know, trying to like every couple of weeks, like, you know, release some new videos, right? That's why also we kind of, you know, try to build a developer community for that. You know, we're still, you know, pretty small startups, and you know, and, uh, you know, trying to you know, earn money on one side and, uh, and then, you know, and then, you know, do keep up with development, etc. But uh, yeah, I think we're very agile. And uh, whenever you have like questions, requests, etc., we're really, uh, we're really friendly, you know, from, from a kind of operation perspective. So if you have any questions, send us email and we will, you know, if we can do it, we will do it. I have another question. Uh, for me, agile and DevOps, it's also linked to test. Yep. And it's continuous testing. Yep. And on what you show, I feel more it's like a press patch it. And it's run more or less as we used to do a long time ago. And we do the stuff. It works, it doesn't work. We change it already. Yeah. It works. I know what you mean. So uh, it looks like this because it's the same interface and spreadsheet is a spreadsheet. But actually what it does is not just that does like testing because, you know, with a testing, what you have is, you know, you have functional testing or you have, you know, user testing and then that, right? We actually have a use case and we don't even expose those uh, plugins yet, but we have a customer who wanted to have like fully automated testing done uh, for their web-based application. So we actually wrote a plugins that launch like headless, uh, headless uh, browsers, okay, and go for like clicks, da 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 da, and then actually you know gives you the, the results. So yes, you could do that, but I would say that would be like another part of functionality that you can do, you know, same as IT automation and you know robotic automation. So you can do a test automation, but it's not not just testing automation, right? It's more like Think of it building your own, if you're going as a service. So starting from like building, you know, traditional way software, but you change into as a service and you actually start building your software, you know, where you, you have a web service and the interface and it always talks to you in different parts of software in the same way, et cetera, et cetera. That's more the area where, where, where the values are. Yeah. So if you would like to offer like web, testing as a service and you would like to build your own business, yes, you could do that. Uh, I think, I think, uh, I think it's a bit the same as uh, yeah. uh, what, you, what you should, doesn't show any, what you do any. Uh -huh. uh, it's, it's really because, so, so we have we a have couple of uh, use cases, uh, videos recorded with that, etc. And we're actually improving that as well. So uh, it's just because of, you know, time we you know we were not able because believe me every time we like do a, a, a nice presentation it takes like hour and a half <laughs> yeah, Oh, you can you can store process on the Git. You can use Git as a repository for the process, right? That's fine. It's it's uh, it, you know, but 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 where it sits is it's an automation uh, it's an automation framework. So if you have a category of automation frameworks, it will sit there. If you don't, it should sit there. Think of it as your really as a service journey. You know, from from doing you know any kind of work manually and always you know the same like like we started with coding you know in the past etc. 
you know, what it does is it extends, you know, automation to, 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 to the business processes. So you can create any business process that will be kind of automated. And yes, you know, if, if there is plugins missing, you can, you can write your own and add them in. Yeah, so we have, so we have, like I said, we have almost 100 plugins released. But we, what we say is we guarantee that we're going to deliver a new plugin within two working days if we don't have any. Okay, or actually we can also point you to a documentation how very quickly, you know, you can write your own plugins because some of our customers, you know, want to keep that knowledge actually inside and, you know, and they say, oh, we're not going to expose those plugins. You know, we want to keep them just for our organization and they build them by themselves and they create their own uh, uh, repository, plugin repositories. <laughs> Very good question. It does. Uh, well, we can do that. We can do that. Now, uh, very often, so, so, so very often we use, you know, when, when, when I was trying those uh, automation modes, one of the automation modes is a batch. So sometimes you have a process that actually, you know, instead of creating like a loop, what you do is you, you just ba uh, a batch request, you know, send a request for the batch for another process, right? And yes, you can do it. Very common use case, very common use case. And then what we also recommend is whenever you build a cloud architecture, you know, you test like how much, you know, IT resources you need to that specific, what we call cluster. Okay, because, you know, if, if it's like uh, some, some important, some important uh, part of your systems, you know, that will, be, that, will, that will be, you know, triggered from, you know, many different IT sources, then, you know, you can actually use a kind of a, 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 a flexible or elastic scale out for that. Right. So thank you very much. Thank you.